Good morning, everybody. Welcome to What to Do Wednesday. Uh, do you ever notice that I say the same thing like every time in this exact same inflection? Why is that? <laughs> anyway, we have lots of uh, good questions to answer, so we're not going to spend a whole bunch of time uh, doing anything but answering questions today. So I'm going to give people just a second to come on. But I want to say, if you did not watch last night's Healing Journeys today, we talked about being fully persuaded, and man, it was a powerful teaching. And you know, and I can, I can say that because that was purely the Lord speaking through me. To Him be all the glory for every word that comes out of my mouth. So, very excited about today. We have a few questions left over from last night. Hi, Connie. Good to see you. How is it in Wisconsin? Is it snowy and cold? <laughs> uh, I love these things, guys. I, I really feel like we're just hanging out and uh, I wish y'all were here with a cup of coffee just sitting across from me. That would, but this is the best that we can do in that regard. So we'll just go with what we have. Uh, hi, Olga. Uh, Winklerova. What is that? Is that, what is that? I was going to guess what uh, nationality that was, but um, uh, no. Hi, Yessie and Pamela. Uh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it last night. Uh, cold in Wisconsin, two degrees. Wow. What is it here in sunny Florida? Let me look. Whoops, that's my calendar, not my, whoops, and that's my, <laughs> slow down. This is a good reminder of turn. It's 66. And it feels like it's 73. Gosh, you just got to love Florida, don't you? <laughs> Hi, Nancy. Awesome, guys. So I had a few questions left over from last night that we're going to answer today. Uh, as always, as a reminder, I do not have Patrick here with me today. I'm so sorry to disappoint you, but he is traveling and working this week. So, but he will be back again next week. I think I got him hooked. And I love it because he has such a different perspective than I do on things. So, we're going to look at a few questions that I had from last night's teaching, and then I'll get to as many email questions as I can. And if there's time, we'll do some prayer at the end. But I really want to spend most of the time answering your questions today. So again, if you do have a question while you're here online with me today, please start your comment out with question. And then at the end, if I do manage to get through all of these questions, I can come back and answer those. So the first question from last night was from question uh, or from Life for Christ is was their name. How do you meditate on the word of God and not think about anything else? Well, if you'll notice when you think about something, you can't have two thoughts at the same time. You can't be thinking two things at the exact same time. It is impossible. Now, you can pray in the spirit and have negative thoughts at the same time because it is your spirit that is doing the praying. That just shows you that there is a complete separation between your spirit and your soul, right? Between your mind, your will, and your emotions because you can pray in the spirit and still be thinking you can still be thinking about the doctor's report. You can still be thinking about your bank statement. You can still be thinking about all of these things, right? But if you, you cannot physically think two things at the same time, it's impossible. So how do you meditate on the word of God? and not think, actually meditating on the word of God will cause you not to think on other things. Whatever you're thinking about, you're thinking about. So it's what you choose to think on. Olga just got back with me. She said it is Jewish German. Oh, that's how you do it in Slovakia. Awesome, it sounds cold there. Is it cold there? <laughs> Hi, Suja Ann, she's from India. Okay, question number two from Jen. This was from last night. 
When is the best time of day to read the word? All day, every day is the best time. To... <laughs> no, really, when when is it best for you? When are you most focused? When are you when do you have the most concentration? I love to read the word in the morning before the house gets going, before Gunther wakes up. Um, Pat, Pat, I'm never awake before Patrick. Patrick is always up before I am. So he has the benefit of a completely silent house. So when I'm up though, when I get up, I seclude myself uh, because Patrick is usually out moving around. Gunther is, you know, he's usually still pretty sleepy in the morning. He'll just come and sit on my lap and sleep. But I like to read the word in the morning, even though I'm not 100% awake. But it gets my day focused right. It gets me thinking about the right things first thing in the morning. And I'll usually read for uh, about an hour. Right now I'm doing, um, I started doing the uh reading the new testament once a month i started doing that again i had stopped doing that for about a year and just really felt like i needed to do that again so i read between six to nine chapters every morning and that usually takes about an hour uh, and if i have something that jumps out at me during that time like if you're on a bible reading plan this is what i would suggest so that you get the most out of it when you sit down to read your however many chapters it is, you ask the Holy Spirit to show you what in this reading you need to get. And what I'll do is I'll read, and now I'm not reading to study, I'm not reading to grasp everything. Uh, and as I'm, I'm, I'm reading for knowing where things are right now, this is my purpose for, for doing this monthly New Testament reading. Uh, so I'm reading, but if something jumps out at me, I'll jot, the, I'll jot that down. I'll write that scripture down, or if I hear him, you know, say a few words or something about this, I'll jot that down, and then I keep moving on. And then I'll go back and I'll dig into those things more later. And that's one way to make sure that you're not just reading to read, okay? Um, and then normally after that, I'll spend 30 to 60 minutes in prayer, praying in the spirit, you know, if there was something particular that he showed me in a passage as I was reading that morning, then I'm thinking on that. Uh, there are certain people that I pray for every morning. All of you guys that, that tune in with me every week, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I'm praying for you. I'm interceding for you that the word that I spoke to you is, is doing what it was sent out to accomplish. So the best time of the day to read is but I love it in the morning. It gets you started right. But if you can't concentrate, if you can't focus in the morning, then you know what? Your concentrated time should be when you are most awake and most alert. Some people read best at nighttime. So that, that really is a personal thing. Uh, Nicole B. Also from last night. I had a question regarding being fully persuaded. How do I combat or handle the absolute negative comments and thoughts of family members around me speaking illness over my son because they are fully convinced and walk in his healing while being bombarded with fear that their negative thoughts and comments are hindering my son from receiving his healing are the negative words stopping his healing only if you are taking those thoughts remember how we talked about abraham uh in the in the teachings in the last couple of weeks how abraham did not waver at unbelief you know abraham had the opportunity to waver he had the opportunity to allow the fear and the negative comments of people i'm sure they made fun of him i'm sure they called him a hypocrite i'm sure they said what how can you call yourself abraham you aren't healed i'm sure you're healing hearing things nicole you know how you can't believe this way god isn't going to heal your son right he's not going to heal him if he was going to heal him he would have done it already you choose what to do with these thoughts those thoughts don't have to cause you to waver those thoughts don't have to cause uh your son's healing to be hindered it's what you do with those thoughts i would also ask how old is your son you know you have while he is in your household you have control over 
you have control over his body. You have authority is the word I need to use, not control. You have authority over his body. If he is at an age where he can believe that he needs to be taught and he can believe with you. But no, you don't have to allow the negativity to, to uh, influence you, to allow it to cause fear. You allow fear by what you think. And, you know, the word says that any word that is spoken against us, we shall condemn. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick. Um, and if any of you know it, just say, um, you shall condemn. Verse. Um, yes. Isaiah 54, 17 says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper okay and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment you shall condemn it is up to you to take those words and to condemn them and you do it by saying i do not accept them this is what i believe this is what i stand on praise god my son is healed whether i see it or not amen uh question from Suja Ann. What version do you use for your daily reading of the New Testament? I actually, each month, I'll choose a new version. Um, this month, I'm just going through the uh, New King James Version, but then I'll read through um, the Amplified. I'll read, uh, I've, I've done them all. I've done the NIV. I've done the NLT. Uh, and I, I love the King James Version. I don't know why, guys. It's just... It's kind of, I don't know. I love it. So that's my my preferred reading. But I do like to read different, different versions. If you're going to read the Passion Translation, please make sure that you're confirming that with either the New King James or the King James Version. Because I found a lot of things in the Passion Translation. Some things they nail right on the head, just like with the Message Version. Sometimes they nail it, and other times they miss it by a mile. So don't base your doctrine on something that you read in the Message or the Passion Translation. If there's something that sticks out to you there, he can speak to you through that. But make sure that it is doctrinally Correct, And you can do that by going back to the New King James or the King James um, version, etc. I'd like to say hello to Pastor Anand in India. It's good to see you, Pastor. Okay, this is from Christy S. And this came in an email. She says, I just had a follow-up question from the question from last Wednesday. So last What To Do's Wednesday. They asked if it was up to us to completely manifest the healing or if God is still involved in that part. You had answered that it was us and the renewing of our mind. What I really want to know and question all the time is does that mean that gradual healing versus quicker or instant healing is because of the person's mind not being totally renewed? It gets really confusing when hearing about examples, even on the healing journeys, where it is still a while or gradual with healing, even once the person was totally believing and their heart was settled on it. Yes, absolutely. The rate that we manifest our healing is totally dependent on us. Because the moment that we prayed, the moment that we spoke to our bodies, the moment that we commanded our bodies to be healed and we said it in faith, that prayer, that command was answered. Uh, you can, we won't get into this, uh, but if you go look in Daniel chapters 9 and te, uh, chapters 10, you see that Daniel makes a request to the Lord. And the request goes to the Lord and the and God sends a messenger and Daniel receives his answer within about three minutes. And that was and that was quick. You know, so many times we we pray and then we look to our bodies for a response. And when nothing happens, we say, oh, it didn't work this time. And it's only been like two seconds. Right. But even in the word, it sets a precedence that there is there is a little bit of time, whether it's three months or so that was in Daniel chapter 9, three minutes. In Daniel chapter 10, the same man makes a request of the Lord, and it takes three weeks for the messenger to arrive. 
But in Daniel chapter 10, you see the reason for that. It wasn't God. In, J in Daniel chapter 10, it says that Daniel, as soon as God heard your request, he sent me. God responded immediately the first time in Daniel chapter 9 and the second time in J Daniel chapter 10. But this time it took three weeks. Why? God didn't change. God still sent the answer immediately. He still responded immediately. But if you read, you see that it was because of the Prince of Persia, which is just referring to a spiritual force. There is a spiritual world out there that, that he had to send the angel Gabriel to help the messenger get to Daniel. So we have to remember that there is not just a physical world, but there is a spiritual world. But the truth is, the moment that you prayed, God answered. The moment that you spoke healing into your body, God answered. That healing is already there. It's just like right here, and we have to bring it, we have to bring it in. And we do that by renewing our mind to what God's word says. Even just meditating on the fact that when I pray, if I, I love 1 John 5 verses 14 and 15 that say, this is the confidence we have that if we ask anything according to his will, God's will is that all be healed and he sent Jesus to provide that for us. If we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, then we will have what we say. It's as simple as that. If you meditate on that, 1 John 5, verses 14 and 15, if you will just meditate on that, when you speak, when you command in Jesus' name, you combine that with John 14, verse 13 and 14, which says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it for the glory of the Father. And then he says again, just in case you missed it, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you combine those two scriptures together and you meditate on them, you will see things happen. And when you ask God or when you command something in your body and you don't see it right away, you know it's still there and it is done. You know, and sometime, well, I'm not gonna get into that. We'll 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 leave the we'll leave the question um, we'll leave the question at that. You know, Abraham was fully persuaded. And I don't believe that he was fully persuaded until he was 99. And I talked about this last night uh, in the teaching. I don't believe he was fully persuaded until God changed his name from Abram to Abraham. I don't think he was fully persuaded till he had done everything he could in the natural to be healed and realized that it was impossible for him to do anything to be healed. And I think at that point, he realized that it was all God and that God's promise was only going to be fulfilled through God and by God. And it was at that point that he started to become fully persuaded. That was when he was 99. And within a few months, I can't tell you how many months, but I know he received that at 99. And by the time he was 100, he had a child. So within a few months, I can tell you for myself that I became fully persuaded in October or November of 2013 and I was completely healed in March of 2014. There's a process. It's a process that has to take place. So I, I, I truly believe that being fully persuaded is a very big part of receiving your healing. And I think if you will just put that as your standard, if you will put being fully persuaded as, as what you're walking towards, and you know, we went through five or six different things last night of how you become fully persuaded. And they're really all things that you do up here. It's how you think, it's what you allow to affect you. There, you don't have to worry that I'll never become fully persuaded. If you're thinking I'll never become fully persuaded, you've already defeated yourself. Think on the things of God. 
think on those things that we taught move towards being fully persuaded and the more you move towards being fully persuaded the more fully persuaded you'll be and the more your faith will be able to work that that raise the dead mountain moving mountain shaking walk on the water faith that you have will become effective as you move towards being fully persuaded amen hello gail Hi, Joshi. I'm looking forward to our meeting on Friday. It's going to be good. Uh, hi, Barbara. Hey, look at this. You're next on my list to answer a question. I think I've answered this question before, but I, I get it so often. I'm going to answer it again. I'm just going to answer it quickly. But Barbara asked, this was through Facebook on an email, is diet important to our healing? And if so, what do we eat? You know, Diet is important to maintaining your healing. Uh, I think diet can be important to uh, receive your healing if it's something that God has placed on your heart to do. Now, I'll, I'll say it again. You can't sit on the couch and eat Twinkies all day long and expect your body to be healthy. It just so yes, diet does play a part in health. But our faith should never be in the food that we're eating. We should never be able to say it was because of our diet and the word that we received our healing. Our faith should always be fully in the word of God to heal us. I did, I did, um, I did Daniel fast. I fasted a couple of times during that six month period of my, my true healing journey. Um, I've done the candida diet. I've, you know, and I do it because my body responds really well to it, but my faith is still all in God. I look at guys, I look at supplements. I look at taking care of my body and exercise. I look at, um, you know, if you juice or, uh, if you, I don't know if you if you do a special diet I look at ways that we can physically take care of this temple that's what we're doing when we're dieting that's what we're doing uh, that's how I look at it now you can look at dieting as I'm putting my faith in this diet because when I diet I feel better or uh, and see that's do you see that that slight shift in your thinking that you're feeling better because of this diet you're feeling like what i'm doing with this diet is healing my body now god can heal you through diet he can heal you through physical means but your faith always remains in the fact that it is him that is doing the healing your focus always remains on him there are still times where I'll I'll do a uh, a, a Daniel diet or um, and my thoughts are always on him. My thoughts are always on him. Thank you, Lord, that through this food that I am eating, that that my body is blessed. That my body takes this food and it uses it to support life and health. You know, First Timothy four. All my Bibles are in the other room. How did I do that? Okay, let me just pull it up here. First, this is a good verse for for y'all that um, suffer from um, food intolerances. It's First Timothy four, verses four and five. Uh, I don't want it in the NIV. Verse four says again, First Timothy four four through five. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. All food that you put in your mouth is sanctified by his word. All food is, is uh, good for your body. All food, I'm not, guys, don't hear me wrong here. This isn't an excuse to go eat pizza every night and fried chicken and all of these things okay but all food is good for your body if you're eating good food and your body is rejecting it then you can take these scriptures and stand on them before you eat you say this this food is good for my body it is from the lord it is blessed 
It is sanctified by God's word, 1 Timothy 4, 4 through 5, and by the prayer that I am praying right now. Okay, so diet, I believe diet is important in especially maintaining health and healing in your body. Let's see. Question from Max. This was in an email. Max Moses, how do you actually forgive yourself? I did a teaching on this called uh, It's Time to Forgive. It's Time to Forgive Yourself, okay? Uh, and you can find that on the website, holyknownministries.com or on the YouTube channel. I think I also did it for Healing Journeys today. Um, forgiving yourself is a choice. It is a complete choice, just like anything else. You choose to forgive yourself. I want to read you a, a verse uh, in Ephesians 4, verse 32. Ephesians 4, 32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. It says be kind and compassionate to one another, but I... I believe that also means be kind and compassionate to yourself, forgiving not just each other, but forgiving yourself. Forgive, God has already forgiven you for everything that you have done. He has, as far as the East is from the West, your sins are removed for you. Have you ever wondered why he said, as far as the East is from the West and not as far as the North is from the South? Because if you head West, Think about a globe, okay? If you head west, you are never going to come upon east. You are always going to be going west. But if you head north and south, right, there will come a point where you hit the bottom and then, so you're going south. When you hit the bottom, all of a sudden, you're coming back and you're going north and then you're going south, and then it, it changes. This is why God says that he removes your sin as far as the east is from the west, because they never intersect. They never come back on themselves. We have to remember this. Our sins have been that far removed. The word says that he will remember your sins no more. If he remembers your sins no more, if he has forgiven you, then why are you remembering your sins and not forgiving yourself? You have to take Ephesians 4.32 for yourself. It is a commandment. Forgive yourself. Forgive others. Forgive yourself just as God has forgiven you. It is a choice. Pure and simple. It's a choice. Amen. Okay. Question from Claudia. Uh, is there a scripture or a time or a teaching when Jesus says he is God? So I put on our Facebook page underneath the photos in a photo album called Files because I still haven't figured out how to upload a Word document or a PDF. If anybody knows how to do that, please let me know. Okay, so there are two documents. Let me read the sec her second question too, okay? So the first one is there a scripture or a time of teaching when Jesus says he's God? And the second one is in the book of Revelation, we see a distinction made in the greeting to the church of Asia between the one who was who is and is to come, this is Revelation 1-4, and Jesus Christ, Revelation 1-5, the faithful witness. They are one and the same, so why are they listed separately? And then the last question, also, Jesus made us kings and priests to his God and Father. Well, they are co-equal and co-eternal, right? So, yes. And to answer those questions, this, this is at the heart of Christianity, the Trinity, that, that God is three parts. He is spirit, or he is father, spirit, soul, and body. He is Father, Holy Spirit, and Son, Jesus Christ. This is at the heart. If Jesus Christ is not God, 
Jesus even says it himself. I hope I wrote this scripture down. Yeah, in John 8, verse 24, Jesus says that if you didn't believe that he was the son of God, then you would die in your sins. If Jesus wasn't God, he couldn't die for your sins. If we don't believe that Jesus is the son of God, then we ourselves are most miserable and still in our sin. This is at the heart, and I believe this is why it is so attacked in the church, the Trinity. You know, uh, Islam attacks it. Uh, Judaism attacks the Trinity. But we know that there is one God that is in three parts. And it, to be able to answer this really well, if you really want to know about this, I put two documents uh, in that photo album called Files. One is, uh, G I don't remember what I called them now. Go in there. You'll know them when you see them. But there's two files. One is about the Trinity and one is about Jesus being God. Look through those. Look at those scriptures. You will see without question that God is one God in three parts. Okay. That's all I'm really going to say about that. Now, as far as why he says, why he names them separately, I don't know. Why he says to God and Father, uh, you know, I actually I have an answer for that one. Jesus made us kings and priests to his God and Father. You know what? That's just Jesus saying, listen, that he is our God. He is the almighty God. He is supreme. He is majesty, king of kings, lord of lords. But he was also demonstrating that he is our Father. That he has, we have relationship with him. I, I believe that's why those two are, are listed. Uh, this is from Derry, D-E-R-R-Y-E. -R -R -E. I hope I said that right. This is for Derry, okay. How did you get off of multiple medications? I am believing not to refill the medications I'm taking in the next week. You get off multiple medications the same way you get off single medications. You meditate on God's word. Several months before I went off my medications, I remember sitting in my friend's, sitting at my friend's kitchen table and saying to her, I am just waiting for the day when God tells me to stop taking my medications. I knew that day would come and I called them my medications. They are not your medications. They are medications. They are temporary. They are not yours. They are a temporary fix to a problem that is in the process of being healed in your body. And there will come a day where God tells you to stop taking your medications. But you're not going to do it as a step of faith. You're going to do it when you know that it's time to stop taking your medication, the medication. So whether it's one or it's multiple, you wait for him to tell you. And until that time, you take him in faith, knowing that they are aiding the process of your healing. Amen? Question from Minaj. This is in an email. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This question, I really had to stop and go, huh, I never thought of this. So pay attention. I'm confused on the second by. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm confused on the second by. Is this verse saying that faith comes by hearing God's word preached to us and or faith comes by reading God's word? Or is this verse saying that the word of God enables us to hear, that our hearing comes from the word of God? Meaning, is it saying that faith comes by hearing but hearing can only occur when God's word quickens it, us to hear. Or is this verse saying both or what? I'm so confused. Who or what causes us to go from hearing to having faith? Okay, so verse uh, Romans 10, 17 starts out by saying, so then. This is a connector, which means that so then, whatever comes after it is linked to what was spoken about before. And verses 13 for 15 are talking about being saved by the preaching of the gospel. So that saving faith, okay, we're going to work it one way and then we're going to work it the uh, other way. 
Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So that saving faith, that God kind of faith comes when you hear the gospel. The gospel is preached. Let's go the other way. The gospel is preached. You hear it and faith comes. That's how I interpret it. That's how that's how I believe it. That's how I live it. That's how I I keep walking in faith today is because I'm continually hearing the gospel. Hearing, 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 hearing. It's a continual hearing. It's not a one-time healing hearing. I have already experienced the fact that you can't hear years and years and years ago and receive something and expect to receive that same something if you haven't been hearing, <laughs> if you haven't been hearing from God. It's a continual hearing. So I believe you hear the gospel is preached, you hear it, and when you hear it, you receive that faith. It is a gift. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 say that uh, grace and faith are gifts. So when you the gospel is preached, you hear the gospel, you receive that saving faith to believe what you have heard. Amen. Moving on. This is from Melody, uh, Melody C from an email. I see 2 Corinthians 8, 9. This is talking about finances because healing includes finances, right? Some of us need to be healed in our finances. Includes being rich as part of the salvation package as Jesus took on poverty for us. I've had so many debilitating situations the past few years that makes it look like poverty in the natural. Uh, and I won't read all of that. Uh, that looks like poverty in the natural. Does this scripture mean we are already rich regardless of what's happening in the natural? Yes, because in the spiritual realm, you are financially prosperous and rich. Does this scripture mean we are already re rich regardless of what's happening in the natural? The more I've focused on it rather than on my giving, I've actually gotten more finances than from tithing and giving. This is an area where I need healed and want to know if it's already a done deal like healing and salvation. And all I have to do is believe and obviously listen if I'm given a direction instruction or an open door job possibility. So what she's asking brass tacks is, is financial prosperity included in salvation. Absolutely. This word rich in 2 Corinthians 8, 9 means wealthy, abounding in resources. You know, too many times uh, people try to take that and just spiritualize that verse. You know, and it's true that Je Jesus made himself spiritually and uh, emotionally poor so that we could become wealthy. And I'm, I'm reading a little bit of this, guys, because I want to make sure that I, I say it the way God gave it to me. However, it is also a true statement that Jesus became poor financially for us so that we could be wealthy. Now, Jesus had money. If he didn't, he wouldn't have needed a treasurer to keep track of all of the money okay he was not poor in that sense but he was poor if you look at him as god him as god and then he came to earth and had to deal with physical money he was poor in that sense jesus came to earth and he became he could be a millionaire and he'd still be poor compared to what he had in the heavenly realm Okay. Jesus says in 3 John 2, well, John said, Beloved, I wish above all else that you prosper and be in health. This prosper means in your finances, in your emotions, in your relationships. It is all encompassing. He doesn't leave. If he wanted to leave money out of it, he wouldn't have given us the tools to, to get it. He wouldn't have given us the promise that he gives us the ability to gain wealth. If wealth wasn't for us, 
then he wouldn't have given us promises and a way to achieve it. The word says that the love of money is bad. Money is not bad. It takes money to run ministries. It takes money to bless your neighbor. It takes money to bless the people in your church. It takes money to be a blessing. The word says that he gives us seed to sow and bread to eat. He gives us seed to sow and he gives us bread to eat. This is this is enough and extra, right? He gives us enough to live uh, for, for our needs and he gives us extra so that we can be a blessing to others. He wants you prosperous. He wants you, he wants to lavish you with gifts. You know, the motivation is is not though, it's not, I, I, I wanna get and get and get and I want this bigger house and I want this bigger car and he's not against big houses and big cars, but he wants the heart to be father you know, I, I want, uh, we're believing for a certain amount of money, money in our ministry so that we have a certain amount of seed to sow and that we have bread for ourselves to live and bread to feed the people who follow our ministry. You know, we need bread so that we can go out and minister. We need bread so that we can feed our sheep in India. We need bread so that we can feed our sheep in China. We need bread so that we can feed our sheep in the Middle East. God says that he gives bread to the eater and seed to the sower. Seed is above and beyond. He wants to bless you. It is absolutely part of his covenant with you is prosperity. Beloved, I wish above all else that you prosper and be in health. Hallelujah. I'm actually going to do, I might do that next Tuesday. I'm going to do a teaching about the promises of God concerning finances. I might do that. Did you see Gunther? He just walked by. Okay. I had a whole bunch of notes here in finances, but I'm going to wait on those. Let me just answer. I saw a few questions. Let me go back up to the top here and catch your questions. I like to answer for, for you guys that take the time out and actually come on, come online. Nancy, this is talking about forgiving yourself. Nancy says, when I meditate on forgiving myself, I feel guilty thinking I am excusing my bad choices. No, you're not. You're punishing yourself. You're doing penance for those bad choices. You're, you're trying to put yourself on the cross to cover what Jesus has already covered. It's as, it's as simple as that. The enemy wants to keep you in that trap. Of, of thinking that you're, you know, when you forgive somebody else, you're not saying that what you did, what that other person did wasn't wrong. That's not what you're saying at all. You're saying I choose to forgive because I, I need to forgive. The word tells me to forgive. I have been forgiven. I forgive others. I forgive myself. Don't let the enemy keep you in that, that loop, in that trap. That's just a lie. Okay, from Jen, question, I feel a lot of condemnation when I don't wake up early and read the word. There's no special time the Lord is looking for, right? I really have been battling this lately as I used to wake up at 4 a.m. to read the word, exercise, and go to work. It's just hard to always do that with a busy family and everything can slip, uh, can slip away from me. There is no special time with the Lord. Don't allow the enemy to make you feel condemned that you're not getting up at 4 a.m. every morning and then taking care of your family and getting them to school and doing all your errands. And you know what? Be with him all day. Just, you know, Paul says to pray without ceasing. And this simply means just to keep him in mind throughout your day. You know what, when you're on when you're on the way to school to drop the kids off or you're on the way to the grocery store, just take a second to set that side, set that time aside. Uh, just to say, God, I realize you're with me. I see that you're with me. And when you do have time, now here's the thing, some, we have to make time. If we allow 
our to-do list to run our day, there is not going to be time. So if you're not going to be able to get up in the morning and spend that time, then make time. And you have to make time because if you don't make time, it's not going to happen. And you know this from, from uh, relationships in the world, physical relationships, that if you don't spend time with somebody, you're not going to develop relationship with them. If you don't spend time with somebody, you're not going to get to know who they really are. So time is time with the Lord, time spent in prayer, time uh, reading the word is vital to your health as a Christian. It's going to be reflected in how you walk with him, how it's going to be reflected in the degree that his grace shows in your life. Second Peter 1 3 says that grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of him. You only get knowledge and intimate knowledge of him by spending time and spending time in prayer, in reading. So there has to be a time. There has to be a time when you can. But you know what? There's some days I wake up and I am going from morning till night. But I just make sure doing those days, God knows your schedule. And he knows that my heart is towards him. He knows that my heart is longing to spend time with him. And then when you, then you do make time and you make that time good. Okay. But there's no condemnation in that at all. It's simply going to be reflected in how much you manifest his grace in your life. Amen. Uh, um, I sure wish I'm, I'm wav, I'm wavy. Every time I say it, I feel like I'm really just not doing it justice at all. The question is, do you believe for creative miracles any differently than you would believe for healing for sicknesses? No, I don't. I just believe that when I lay hands on the sick, they recover. When I speak to something, it happens because the word says my words are spirit and life. And when I say something, and if I do not doubt in my heart that I have what I say, then I will have it. I do not doubt when, uh, when I speak and I say, I command something to be, I know that Jesus said, if you command it in my name, I'll do it so that the father may be glorified. Sometimes you don't know if you need a miracle or a healing, but God knows, he knows exactly what you need. So I don't believe any differently. Amen. Thank you, Connie, for your comment. I appreciate that. Uh, from Yessie. Hi, Yessie. Prayer request. Please pray. Hold on. Please pray in agreement with me that I will come off the prednisone and all treatments for the autoimmune disease, Sjogren's, and the inflammation. I am in the process of tapering off for the prednisone this month, that I won't need it anymore in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes. I'm going to pray for you. We are all going to pray for Yessie. So everybody hold up that shield of faith. Let's pray for Yessie. Hallelujah. Father, I speak to Yessie's body right now in the name of Jesus. I command you autoimmune system to hear the word of the Lord that says you are filled with all wisdom. You are filled with the wisdom of God that no disease that it is not confused by any disease. It is not confused by Sjogren's. It is not confused by any other autoimmune disorder that her immune system finds those things. It tracks them down and it annihilates them in the name of Jesus. And whatever promotes health in her body, her immune system sees it, recognizes it, and it supports it. I thank you, Father, that as her body comes off that prednisone, that, that her body responds appropriately, that the inflammation goes, that that inflammation that is part of the curse, God, goes in Jesus' name because he hung on the cross and became a curse for Yesi in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And Yesi, I want you to think about what we talked about in the beginning, how when Daniel said that prayer, it took three minutes. 
when Daniel said the next prayer, it took three weeks. But I want you to know that right now the word of God is doing what I have sent it forth to do, that it is healing your body. And when thoughts try to come that say, no, it didn't work, you say, no, God has already sent my answer. My healing is already there. It is in the process. My immune system has been healed and now my body is just recovering. My body is just repairing. And if it takes a week, if it takes a month, if it takes whatever it takes, Jesse, you stand. You do not waver. You do not be moved at his promise that says you are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Donna, thank you for your comment. I, I believe that finances, she said, that would be wonderful if you could do a study on finances. So many times people don't think that that healing, teaching on healing can apply to your finances. But man, a lot of people have sick finances. A lot of people have dying bank accounts, right? We need to revive those things. And we need to know what his promise says so that we can apply those same things. That whole teaching that we did on, on receiving the impossible from God, you can apply that to every area area of your life. But too many times people don't know what the word says about their finances. They think that it all it, it all falls under tithing, right? And that it'll come back 30, 60, 100 fold. But this isn't what the promise is concerning the tithe. Do you know that the tithe, the promise isn't that you will receive 30, 60 or 100 fold based on a tithe? Go look at Malachi 3:10. That's just a little teaser. I think I'm going to do that on Tuesday. Unless God completely changes it, I think I'm going to do a teaching on his promises of finances and how to receive those. Uh, let's see. Olga, question. When I pray out loud, it sounds weird. When I pray out loud, it sounds weird. But when I pray in my heart, I feel closer to God. I don't know what the question is. <laughs> But I know what you're saying, okay? Wow, then then keep praying out loud. Keep keep praying, girl, because I, I'm telling you, pray. There is something about praying out loud, especially praying in the spirit, that will stir up your spirit, man. And and you know what? Everybody's different. But you know why I like to pray out loud? I like to pray out loud because I'm hearing. When I pray, a lot of times I'm just praying scripture. I'm praying the word. I'm speaking the word out. And as I speak out loud, I'm hearing. And what did Romans 10, 17 say? That faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When you hear, when, when you speak the word of God, you hear it. And when you hear it, faith comes. Now, when I say faith comes, you're not getting more faith. You're not, uh, you're not, uh, you know, God's not saying, okay, here's another uh, ladle full of faith because you're hearing my word. What's happening is you are focusing on God's word. And what that does is it eliminates unbelief that the more you focus on his word, the more you eliminate unbelief so that the powerful faith that you do have can become effective to work in whatever you're sending, whatever you're applying it to. Hallelujah. Uh, Olga, sometimes you think that's not right. You know what? Just think about what I just said, and it might change your opinion. Connie, thank you for the prayer of agreement with Connie. That's powerful. Hey, Becky, um, good friend. Of Hi, Becky. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Becky had a great comment. She says, when you pray out loud, you are less distracted as well. That is exactly right. Um, what was the first, what was the first question that we had? Um, what did I do with that? How do you meditate on the word, right? And, and not think about anything else when you're speaking, you also can't be thinking anything except for what you're speaking. So if you're speaking the word, you are focusing on the word. You know, if you're if you're just thinking prayer in your head, it's really easy to get distracted. So thank you for that comment, Becky. I absolutely agree that when you pray out loud, you are less distracted. Okay. 
if I missed anybody's question or prayer request, please um, please write it in there again for me so it comes up on my on my live feed right here. There are a few people. Um, let's see. Well, no, I don't think I don't see Peter Rose Ann. Well, yeah, I'm going to pray. There's a few people I want to pray for real quick that sent me an email, okay? Because they can still come on, and I'll just let them know I prayed for them. Uh, this is for Peter. So, again, y'all agree with me, okay? Um, he says, please pray for me. I've seen you have several illnesses. I do as well. I've been believing for a long time. I can't understand why, as I believe something I can't understand why as I believe something else happens. I am by myself. Nobody believes Jesus already healed us. Please, please pray for me. Hallelujah. So what I'm going to pray for you, Peter, is that the eyes of your understanding are enlightened, that you may know the hope of his calling for you, that you are filled with wisdom and revelation as you grow in the knowledge of him. And I also want to say, Peter, that you are never alone. The word says that God never leaves you and he never forsakes you. So regardless of what everybody else believes, it only matters what you believe. What do you believe? You can. There is a community of, of online believers here. You can join us every Wednesday at 11 right here. Um, we are here. We can we can uh, encourage you. We can pray for you. You'll get a lot of your questions answered. You can go to Healing Journeys today. Uh, they have we have live teachings every day. You can join that community. I feel like we have community here um, because you see the same same people over and over. So you are never alone. You don't have to be alone. And even if you are alone in the physical, God is still right there with you. Amen. Uh, this prayer is going to be for Rose Ann. This is her email. <clears throat> she says, I am bed fast now, almost four years with rheumatoid arthritis and bone and joint damage to hips, knees, shoulders, spine, and muscles. I am on oxygen as my heart is not pumping enough to keep oxygen levels up. I'm in constant pain that is mostly unbearable. My mind is also sickly now as well. I have been listening to your faith series. I know Jesus is the healer and I'm saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. So Roseanne, if you are saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, then you have healing right there on the inside of you, no matter what your body is telling you. But right now, as we all pray for you, Roseanne, we pray for you. I want you to take that prayer that I prayed for Yesi. That prayer is also for you when it comes to rheumatoid arthritis. We speak to that damage in your joints and in your bones, and we command it to be restored in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that as Roseanne takes this word into herself and she receives it, that even now your Holy Spirit is beginning to move through her body, through her joints, through her bones, that you your, your Holy Spirit, the power, the healing power of God is moving through her heart right now that her body pumps blood effectively and that she is no longer in need of oxygen, that her lungs fill with air and she is able to breathe, breathe freely without any assistance. And we speak this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Now, Roseanne, I believe that those words are not just words, but they are powerful and that they are being being active in you right now. And now it's up to you to take those words, to believe them, to receive them, and to begin to expect to see your body change. I believe, I, I curse that rheumatoid arthritis and I command it to leave in Jesus' name. And now that the root of that sickness is gone, your body just needs to heal in Jesus' name. I want to pray for Sherry. This is the this is the last one. Um, Sherry sent me an email. She was diagnosed with cancer two years ago. Uh, she's been in the Word. She felt like she had revelation with healing, and she just got a, um, a negative report that the cancer has actually spread 
to her brain and that lesions have formed, that the, that the enemy is trying to take her out. Well, we declare over you, Sherry, right now. And guys, don't just listen. I want you to agree with me here for Sherry. Hallelujah. Sherry, his compassion is here to heal you right now. I speak to that cancer. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I curse it and I call it dead right now in Jesus' name. It's done. That, that's all there is to it. it. It's done. You take that. You receive that in yourself. You see it happening. The cancer is done. The cancer is dead. The cancer is gone. It might take three minutes for that to show up. It might take a month for that to show up. But if you will believe and continue to believe that it is done, it will be done. Hallelujah. In the spirit realm, it is done done and it is working in you right now in jesus name hallelujah all right guys i i can't believe how fast this hour goes as always if you have questions that you want answered i'm all i, I was almost caught up and now i'm back to 10 questions again in my inbox which i love i love answering your questions <clears throat> send them to me at info at i'm actually going to put it in the comment section info at fully known not ministries ministries.com okay so there it is send me your questions to and your prayer request to fully known ministries.com um, and i'll get to them as quickly as i can y'all know that uh, as as always, if you haven't partnered with Fully Known Ministries or uh, and you want to be part of it, I appreciate your financial support. I appreciate your prayer support. Guys, as we move forward, as we preach the kingdom of God, the enemy doesn't like that very much. So we always appreciate your, your prayers of protection, your prayers of support. Pray wisdom and knowledge and understanding over me. Uh, as I as I grow in the knowledge of him so that I can share that wisdom and understanding and knowledge with you and uh, I love you guys and I will see you next week have a great week